Come to the uh, right varsity. Come to me. I have to go to, from Varsity to Vermont. Yeah, I overheard you. I was at the dentist today with my daughter. So your mom was there, and she's just like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I'm going to make it to Titans game. She's like, it starts at 4.30, so I'm going to head out of here at like 4.10. And she's like, oh, she's talking with her coworkers. And she's the, like, Braylon's games tonight. The best part is, is she's like, she's like, oh my gosh, Braylon, I'm so excited to see you play. And I'm like, mom, I have a game too. And she's like, Oh, yeah, I forgot about you, too. <laughs> oh, ouch. Okay, so anyways, we are recording right now. Oh, that's nice. Oh, hi, Lucas. Yeah, you so, Lucas, I totally Lucas. forgot to hit record fifth hour, so luckily now I get... Class. <laughs> yeah, hang out with seventh right. hour. Cool kids, yeah. right? Sure. <laughs> no. Okay, so anyways, today's lesson is on 5.2, Understand and Inheritance. It's going to be a lot of vocab. Okay, a lot of vocab. Next. Next. <laughs> Thanks, Edwin. Anyways, so what controls traits? So inside each cell, we have a nucleus, and in the nucleus, you'll find chromosomes. And chromosomes are made up of DNA. How many chromosomes do humans have? 46. 46. Okay, so we have 46 chromosomes uh, inside of us. And if you just, you know, take all that DNA out and stretch it out, it, it, it's nine feet. It's a lot of information, jam-packed, over 20,000 genes. Now, Gregor Mendel or Austrian monk, remember, who had no idea what chromosomes are, probably didn't even know what cells were, um, described something called factors. And these factors are parts of chromosomes. He's like, well, geez, it seems like each trait has two factors, where you get one from the egg and one from the sperm. Or with our chromosomes, you get one half from mom and one half from dad. So these factors that Mendel was describing in the previous section he was actually describing chromosomes. Oh no. I'm Alright, we're taking notes. We're on section 5.2. Alright, everyone's got this slide. I can move on. She doesn't have her glasses. Put your glasses on. Hold on. I know, that's risky. That is. She <laughs> likes to live dangerously. <laughs> Hold on, the words are bigger. She like takes them. <laughs> <laughs> no, my jacket lays on my floor too. Okay. So I'm trying to have broken. I'm going to be the person to put her glasses up here and be like, where are my glasses? <laughs> <laughs> I'm more like they're on their face. Like, Okay, I'm not gonna lie. One time, I actually had my cell phone in my hand, and I was like <laughs> looking for my phone. And my husband's just like, um, but I was pregnant, so it was like mom brain. Okay, Ellie, you missed my... something, Ellie. London. I did that with Braylon once. I was like a prank and like, hey, can you call my phone? I can't find it. And she's like, sure. <laughs> and then she texts me, oh. Madison Bailey. I was holding my phone because I thought okay, I lost no. it in the car. And so I like around the drum board. And I was like, oh, wait, I need to find my phone. So I opened up my phone, turned on the flashlight, and started looking for it. <laughs> wow. Okay. So. Genes. Genes are segments or sections on a chromosome. And we have 46 chromosomes, but I'm going to let you know that you have over 20,000 genes that code for your traits. Okay? So it's just a, the genetic information that codes for that trait. Examples of genes. Okay, like I said, there's 20,000 in us. Um, we have eye color, height, earlobes, dimples, dimple chin, widow's peak. My dad has the um, biggest butt chin in the world, I think. Wait, How would you know? Does it look like it? Oh, I thought. Do you have a widow peak? No. What's but my that? children do. Well, your hair comes down to a point. Like your hairline's not straight across. It comes down to a point. Um, oh, Alan has a beautiful widow's peak. <laughs> Alan does. Alan, yeah. We just like bring up Alan. Oh, Alan! Let me see your peak! Oh, I have Alan, a let me see your peak. Booty, a butt chin? Yeah. <laughs> a dimple chin. You kind of, actually, you do have a dimple chin. It's very subtle, but you do. My dad What's had my one. Chin? I don't know. Ratchet? <laughs> okay, anyways. <clears throat> the different forms of a gene are called alleles. 
okay? That's how you say that word. Alleles. Not alley alleles. Yeah, I thought it was I thought allergies at first. It's alleles. I thought it was oh. athletics. And then I looked at the word. Okay. So different forms of gene are called alleles. So the gene is eye color, but the different forms of that gene would be like blue, brown, green. The gene flower color, but the alleles would be purple or white. So they're different forms. Okay, so if I was looking at hairline, that would be the gene. The alleles would be widow's peak, no widow's peak. Yeah. Following? Okay. All right. Some more vocab terms. Can we dim the lights again? Uh, sure. I get the biggest head of Keeping glasses on. Because it was like doing that whole screeching high pitched. Thank you. Okay. So, some more vocab thrown at you. Is this all we have to read? No, uh, I think you got, we have some sample problems. So geneticists, or people that study Wait. genetics, okay, um, the trait that you can physically see with your eyeballs, we call that the phenotype. The trait. The trait that appears or is expressed in that individual or that organism that you're looking at is called the phenotype. So if I'm looking at eye color, I can see blue eyes. That would be the phenotype. I can see an individual that might have brown eyes. Um, I don't have a widow's peak. Okay, so when I look in the mirror, be like, oh, no widow's peak. So like, that's what you can see. What if you don't look the same as you do? What? Well, uh, that sounds tricky. <laughs> Did you know you're never gonna be able to see yourself? You only have to. You have to go off of what people describe you as pictures and what you see yourself as in the mirror. I see like myself you. every day. It's horrible. God. Yep. Mm -hmm. Deep. I know. <laughs> I'm terrified. I have no clue what you just said. All I heard was you can't touch anything on a mirror. All I heard was what if you have like a, you know how some people say they have like near death experiences and they like see themselves leaving their body and then they're like floating over their body. And oh like, yeah, that doesn't count. That's oh, that doesn't count. Oh, okay. No. Okay. But there was this guy who said that he died for a couple minutes and then he like didn't go to heaven, I guess. And he was like. When I came back to life, I changed myself. There's like, people that do have experiences like that. I, I, I need to go down or up. Okay. <laughs> so, anyways, so the phenotype is what you can see. Now, what codes or um, the alleles that make up that phenotype, we call them genotypes. Okay, so the genotypes are like the letters that we use to represent that phenotype. So it says here, the two alleles that control the phenotype are called the genotypes. We discussed, I think yesterday, dominant versus recessive, okay? White. If, if a trait is dominant, then we use capital or uppercase letters. If a trait is recessive, then we use the lowercase letters. Remember that as, if, as long as you have that dominant allele, okay, um, as long as you have that one capital letter, you're going to have the dominant trait no matter what. So it says in order for the dominant trait to be expressed, you only need one uppercase letter. In order to be recessive, you have to have both letters be lowercase. So your genotype has to be both lowercase. So blue eyes is actually recessive. So in order to have blue eyes, you have to be little b, little b. Madison Bailey. Uh, what about, like, um, if, so you know how for whatever it was in the asexual reproduction thing, for X and Y or whatever the letters were, what yep. if you have two little T's and one big T? Two little T's and one big T. You will be dominant for that trait. Good question. Yes. Yep. She's talking about when you have an extra sex chromosome, when an indiv individual is like XXY. And it's big T, little T, little T. If you, as long as you have that big T, then you will have that dominant trait, whatever T stands for. So here's a diagram showing the phenotype. Okay.
Okay, blue eyes. You can see that characteristic. Over here, brown eyes. You can see that characteristic. But what you don't see are the letters. You look at someone with blue eyes and you don't say, Oh, I see the little b, little b. Okay, no. Okay, you just, you can't see that. Okay, so we, these are the, I want to say, I don't want to say imaginary letters, okay? But these are just letters that we use to describe that phenotype. So that's considered the genotype. So recessive, blue, lowercase letters, in this case, little b, little b. Brown eyes are dominant. So as long as you have a big B in your genotype, then you'll have brown eyes. So you have big B, little B, or big B, big B. I thought you were going to call me babe. Okay. I was like, what? Okay, <laughs> two, more, two more sets of vocab words here. Homeozygous. Homeozygous. My dad broke my mirror last night. Homozygous and heterozygous. And he got blocked all over my room. Um, nobody used to hear that now. Wait, what happened? We are recording, Hannah. We are yeah. live. <laughs> Wait, what happened? My dad broke the mirror. We don't, it's, wow, yeah. that's going to be forever on YouTube. Awesome. <laughs> Wait, this is on You're going to go famous. Hey, did you know that one of my YouTube videos has over 1,600 views? Really? Dang. I know, I'm going to be rolling in the dough here, right? <laughs> <laughs> you gotta is there a lot of you singing? <laughs> no, I can't believe my calcium rep only has like hundred and some views. I'll go watch it a million times for you. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, just and I'll split my profits down. with you. Just have the yeah. whole school watch it once. You have a video you like sing it on YouTube? Rapping. And I got grills. Grills? <laughs> Wait, you're singing rapping. <laughs> I was rapping. I got grilled. Oh, yeah. I'm not gonna lie. The first time I saw that video, I was like, mm, she's weird. I'm not really excited to have that. <laughs> that was like, you know, they showed me that like four times, and I'm like, <laughs> And the lesson here is don't judge a book by its cover. Oh, no, I felt like you're weird. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Okay. Anyways, sorry. Sorry. Sorry, YouTube, we are live, Hannah. No. <laughs> no. Okay. Anyways, homozygous versus heterozygous. So, homozygous means that the alleles, and the alleles are the letters, okay? The letters or the alleles are the same. So, big B, big B, they match. Homo means same. So, we would describe this as homozygous. Little b, little b. Even though they're both lowercase, they're the same alleles, okay? Homozygous. Heterozygous means the alleles are different. So you have an uh, uppercase and a lowercase, or a big letter and a small letter. So big B, little b, that's heterozygous. Big T, little t, that's heterozygous. London. So the big B and the little b, like, stood for brown and blue, couldn't you have two different eyes if you have big B and little b? No, no, because big B is dominant, so it will mask the recessive allele. Now, there are individuals that do have brown, a brown eye and a blue eye, like Caden Olson. And he is considered a mosaic, and we will talk more about mosaics later on. Okay. okay, let's do the practice problem here. Okay, it says you are studying pea shape. Round pea plants are dominant over wrinkled pea plants. Use the letter R for your allele. So looking at our peas here, what are the phenotypes that we could possibly see in our pea plants? Phenotypes. What are we looking at in this example? Yeah, we're looking. Wait, what? No, Read the introduction, the little description. Oh, the P shape. P shape. Thank you. You are studying P shape. So that is. Right yes. So it says, what are the phenotypes? I would accept P shape as an answer. So now I have to type this in. No. I would also accept. What are the different P shapes? Wrinkled and. No. Round. Did you get it? <laughs> yeah, I'll it. What? Um, in your notes? Yes. It just translated to peace. <laughs> okay. okay. So, P shape, wrinkled, and round. Okay. Then it says, what are the genotypes for round C's? So the genotypes are the letters. So what letter combinations could I have that would represent round P 
pea plants. You know what? I have to write pea shape. Big R. Big R. Very good, because big R is dominant over little r. And so round is dominant over wrinkled, so you could be big R, big R, or big R, little r. Wait, so we write P-shaped, wrinkled, and round. Yep. Woo! Why did Hannah stop? Can't you and then... Little r. Would little r, little r stand for round? No. Would it stand for wrinkled? Wrinkled, yeah. Okay. Which one of these, big R, big R, or big R, little R, is homozygous? Big R, big R. Big R, big R. I can't get my... my I'm Which one is heterozygous? Little R. Hetero. No. Big R, little R. Yes, big R. I did little R, big R, but that's okay. Always put your capital letters first. Wait, R, R. Big R, big R. And then for Aries, Hold on, I'm lost. Wait, now we have to move. How can you be lost, Hannah? You literally only have to write down <laughs> letters. Wait, so wait. Letters. Okay, I will give you time to catch up. What are Jen and me? Okay, okay. I think I'm, I'm not lost anymore. I just need to get okay. everything. What? R, R, stash. R, like 10 minutes. What? We're dragging everything. Okay. The genotype for wrinkled pea plants. What's the R, genotype? Little R, little R. Little R, little R. Wrinkled is recessive, so that means your letters have to be small. So little R, little R. Now you can see how it's really small. Woo! And is it homozygous or heterozygous? Heterozygous. It is heterozygous. Oh, yeah. Oh, Wait, what? So it's okay. heterozygous. So it lets me select this all. Hetero. Okay. We could just highlight it. That's cool. Yeah, go ahead and circle it. It's just mm -hmm. that yeah. fifth hour I wrote on my board with a white erase marker, but Lucas can't see that. So. Oh, yeah. Zygos. Okay. Yeah. Let's do another sample problem because that was kind of rocky. This one. Okay, I just got lost. Big. Just a little bit. We're studying pea color. Purple pea plants are dominant over white pea plants. Use the letter P for your allele. So, what are the phenotypes? Little A. Yep. So, phenotypes means the physical characteristics that you can see. And that means you can look at white or purple. But I would also accept uh, pea color. Okay, for your answer. So these are the, that's what you can physically see. P color. Okay, I gotta add P color to it. Well, Maddie. I'm just gonna have to erase it. Okay, moving on to genotypes. Genotypes means letters. White. Are we using the letter R? P, big P, big P, little P, little Yeah. So be aware of which letters you're using. So the genotypes, purple is dominant. So that means that I we're going to have a... I don't know which word you're using, like letter. Because it said. Up there. there. Oh. Okay. So genotypes for purple. Purple is dominant, so it means you're going to have capital letters. So you can be big P, big P, or big P, little P. P, P, or P, P. Thank you, Anna. Boom, boom. Boom, 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 boom. Read that. Leave. Wait, is that genotypes? Yeah. Yep, genotypes. Of the two genotypes. Wait, mine says red eyes. That's the third one, Hannah. <laughs> it says red eyes. Which one is homozygous? Uh, big P, big P. Yep, big P, big P. And which one's hetero? Big P, little P. Big P, little P. I'm way off. Yeah, you're on the third one. Yep. <laughs> Wait, what? Where are you? P, P. We are on P color. What's the genotype for white pea plants? Remember, white is recessive. Little P, little P. And is this heterozygous or homozygous? What? Homo. Little P, little P. The letters are the same. I don't know what you said. 
I say hetero twice? Yes. Oh, hetero, hetero. Okay, hey, now we're in Jenny O type. Thank you. <laughs> is that, wait, is that? I don't know if I do. I know you do. It's actually not a real time. Real time. Real time. What, you guys get out early today? Yeah. yeah. Three yeah. Wait, three I'm in the wrong one. That's why. Yeah, time that drone. That's why. <laughs> Maddie, I need help. You need to take that Change for everybody who does a Donald Duck voice. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm not Donald Duck. Get your notes off. Wait, please. The words are too close together. Okay. You just need a hard Okay, for this final example, London, you can't say anything. I'm a shoe. Yeah, I don't want to hear it from you. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> okay, third example. You are studying eye color and fruit flies. White flies are recessive to red eyes. Use the letter R for your allele. So what are the phenotypes here? P R. -R. Pheno means physical characteristics that you can see. White so and red. White and red. Wow, I would also accept, what else? I'm not good. I screwed up. Does it surprise you? Okay. What else would could you write down that, that would not? P color. Wait, not P color. Pink? Fruit fly color. Would it be eye color? Eye color. <laughs> Good. So red and white. I would also accept eye color. Right and red. R R and R and R. Or big R big R. Big R big R and, and big R little R. Very good. So the genotypes for red eyes, red eyes are dominant. Big R, big R, and big R, little r. And I don't give enough space. But which one is homozygous? R, R, big R, big R. Yeah, big R, big R. Big R, big R. And then hetero? Big R, big R, little r. Big R, little r. Yeah. The next is little r, little r. Wait, so, and then... All right. The genotype for white eyes? Little, little, little R, little R. Little R, little R. Is this homo or hetero? Hetero. Really? Is it really hetero? No, no it's hetero. Homo. It's homo, I guess. Because exactly. the letters are the same. They're little R, little R. This is hetero. Okay. This is homo. Wait, would big R, big R be Yep. Yep, big R, big R is also homozygous. What do you mean? It's just there. My leg is just laughing nervous. For all of them, it's either it's always like little R, little R, big R, big R, big R, little R. So how do you know which one's which? How do you know which is which one? Hetero or homo? Hetero means that you're gonna have an, a big letter and a small letter. And then homo means it could be big letter, big letter, or small letter, small letter. <laughs> yeah, she has a basement. Okay, so that's all the notes we're going to take today. Um, in Google Classroom, if you could, please pull up this assignment. It says 5.2 worksheet. Oh, no. Wait, when do we have to do the... Wait, when's the review guide done? Or due? Uh, not this week. Can I go to the bathroom? Probably Tuesday next week. Okay. No. Oh, finally, it's not. In like two minutes, you can. Finally, it's I mean, not like. I gotta go and like. Horizontal. In two minutes, you can. It won't take me long because I messed up. So, here's the word bank. I tell you how many times you have to use each word. This is where I messed up. For alleles, you will actually use the word alleles three times. Okay. Three times. Okay. So, it's a word bank. This is, this is probably, this is the tough page right here. It's tough. There are some that are easy, but there's some tough ones in here. The second page, it says, the Osmox is a fictional creature with a variety of traits. Study the list of Osmox alleles for the seven traits below. Then look at the genotypes of a particular Osmox named Gloric. There's Gloric. Using that information, write Gloric's phenotype for each trait on the lines provided. So these are the seven traits, okay, and it describes hair. So the first one's hair. You're either shaggy or short-haired. And if it's shaggy, you'll have a capital S. If you're short-haired, that means you need to have two little S's. Okay. So when we look at Glork's genotype, he is big S, little S. So does he have shaggy hair or short hair? Shaggy. Shaggy. Yeah. 
So if you have the capital letter, okay, like in this case, big S, little s, you're going to show the dominant trait. And shaggy is dominant. So for number one, you just write shaggy. Let's do the next one. Nose. So nose, if you're orange, it's going to be big O. You're going to have a big O. If you're green, then you're going to have two little O's. Green. So here we look at Glork's genotype, little O, little O. Why do you have a green nose? I don't know. I didn't make this up. Wait for a shape. Shaggy here, then we write two big S's? You don't need to do that. You just write shaggy. So number two is green. So he's going to have a green nose. And so you're going to go through for the rest of the traits. Now, for five extra credit points, five, down here somewhere, if you draw Glork with his seven phenotypes, so you better draw some kind of whatever creature organism that has shaggy hair, and a green nose, and then you have to figure out the other traits he has. I will give you five extra credit points. Julia. Okay. For number four, I think it says big P, little P. How do you do that? Big P, little P? Yeah. So it's just like with big S, little S. Big S, little S, what kind of type of hair did he have? Shaggy. Shaggy because he had a capital letter. So big P, little P, well, he's got a capital letter. So what kind of teeth is he going to have? Pointed. Okay. Well, Edwin. A lot for the extra credit. Can we just write write him on a piece of paper? I need to, you'll have to take a picture then and then attach it in Google Classroom. So whatever you want to do. Okay. Five extra credit points. So that's it. I'm done. Rest of the time is yours to work. Okay. Sorry, Lucas.